Shalom, Shalom. Come, Yashallah. Rise, Israel. Arise, awake. Put on that beautiful garments. All right. Put on that beautiful garments. The garments of salvation, the garments of righteousness, the garments that the Most High has passed down to his children from generation to generation. If it did not happen and if it wasn't so, I would not be here proclaiming it. That's how I know that I'm <laughs> a child of the promise or we are the children of the promise because it was passed down from generation to generation. There were always prophets among the people in our captivity. Always. OK, we got to remember that. We know that. We ain't going to forget it. All right. I want to give all honor, all glory, all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakodash. All right, say water, water. Thank you, Mosai. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for the good and the bad. See? We just can't thank him for the good. That's madness. Because, see, in these bad times or through bad situations, you're supposed to pick out the good uh go inside and say hey what can i get from this all right first of all whatever it is if it's something that you can control don't do it again secondly if the most high presents something in your life that comes out to be bad or whatever hey there's something always to be gotten from that situation always all right so just came out of shabbat or the sabbath day which is the seventh day um for any new eyes new ears fresh body coming in uh may come across this video we are the children of the promise c-o-t-p when i say we i mean all of us even the brothers and the sisters that haven't received the truth that they are the children of Israel, okay? Or the children of the scriptures. However you want to put it. <clears throat> but, you know, we are recognizing that we have been lied to. We're coming back to our true, coming back to our true heritage, our culture, which is, first of all, the creator of all things. He's our inheritance and we are his inheritance. We are surnamed after him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are just that. So um, what I want to share right now, family. Give me one second, family. One second, family. I have a slight bit of confusion here. Oh, what's going on right here? There's always something, all right? Bam, there we go, fam. Let's get this thing right. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Here's the deal. I'm going to be coming out of the Apocrypha. Okay. Once again, for the newcomers, it's a part of the Bible. If you go out and get a 1611 King James Version Bible, the original, it's implemented or it is inserted within the text. Okay. Um, you can get it online. Maybe you can go to Barnes and Nobles. Most of the time I just shop online when it comes to certain books. Um, but this is the Apocrypha. And I'm going to be um, reading from this text right here. Okay. This is where I'm be coming from. Why? Because as a family, we need it, especially recognizing that we are the children of Israel and coming back, recognizing why the curses of the book of Deuteronomy was put upon us. What can we do to help um, or to change things around, you know? And I, I would say it all the time. Um, if you got kids out there and if your kids disrespected your home in a manner uh, and you told them not to do something and they did it anyway 
and they did it to the point. Just, let's just say they were selling drugs out of your house and you said, hey, y'all got to go. You got to go. You got to go. All right. And they were minors, but they got to go. People been shooting at your house, breaking in your house. OK, you just about had enough of that. So. They got to go. Maybe they'll go stay with their grandmother or their aunt somewhere, but they definitely got to get out of there. And that's what happened to us. We got kicked out. We got kicked out for being disobedient. OK. Um, but in order to come back home, what are your requirements as a parent? What would you require from your kids, those same kids? Think about it. Is the door of opportunity still open for them? And if so, what can they do to obtain being adopted back? Because at that point, you cut them off. You know, they still your kids, but they're not allowed in your house. You know what I mean? But you got standards, you got rules, you got regulations as a parent, as being the caretaker and the provider. Even the creator, if you want to want to go there. You know, you brought the kids into the world. They didn't bring you. All right. So you got your own regulations in your house that you expect to be um, upheld. Right. And the most high, the creator, the God of Israel, he got his standards that he expect to be upheld. All right. And he expect us to uphold them still to this day. Just because we got kicked out. That don't mean to disrespect our father. Same goal if you got kids, they shouldn't be out in the street talking bad about you because they did bad, something bad to you. Right. That makes all the sense. It's just simplicity, right? Mm -hmm. Book of Proverbs, first chapter, right? How long will you simple ones love simplicity? I don't love it no more. And I don't want to be called simple neither. Not no more. So I'm going to get on the right hand side. OK, with the sheep. Not going to be on the left hand side with the goats, with the stubborn. OK, so here's what's going to happen today, family. Um, I told you I would be coming out of that text. This uh, apocrypha here. But at the same time, I will be going expounding on this text and actually this is a prayer if y'all saw it, it's a prayer of manassas or manassas king of judah okay king of judah all right king of judah and um oh. hold on family Got to get y'all some of these too. Get you some fringes. All right. Oh, I'm glad I brought that out. Let me grab that right quick. Also, let me implement that in this teaching. That's the most high doing that. That's the most high doing that. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. All right, family. Here we go. Um, hmm. This is this is going to be this prayer. It's going to be an acknowledgement of our sins. OK, especially for those who knew and ain't no especially it's for all of us because ain't nobody. Redeemed yet. OK, no one is redeemed yet. It's a lot. Yeah. All right, family, no one is redeemed yet. OK, and I, I got to keep saying this for anybody that's new, redeemed or delivered or saved. I know you if you went to church and you say I'm saved, I don't know what you say from, 
but we don't we, we that's a that's a no no in the Israelite family that's a no no why is that a no no the most highest indignation or his wrath to come and judge this earth have not happened yet we're in the midst of it it's on it's, it, it, the heat is turning up but we ain't seen nothing yet you wait till we keep going in these scriptures and we're going to show you what the most high got for the earth and for those of israel of the so-called negroes so-called hispanics and the so-called native native americans in the western hemisphere once again i'm gonna keep quoting this that we are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth of the earth okay but since i'm over here in daughter babylon i'm gonna speak from this side of the world so those who do not come back home repent i mean come back to your father to your nationalities yes take hold of that say so yes i know i'm israel i know i screwed up according to the scriptures i didn't know but now i know i screwed up we screwed up but we also have to take a personal blame and if we personally take the blame that means we all go to the father in our own personal time pray ask for forgiveness he will hear and he will turn our captivity he will turn back our captivity that's a promise he made so we are children of that promise mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and one thing about it if you love the most high you how about shim you how shy you got to keep his commandments you got to keep his commandments okay <laughs> You got to keep his commandments. Let's see here, family. Let's see here, family. Okay. Yep. Let's see here, family. Give me one second. Okay. Let's see here, family. If you love the most high, he love you back. But he don't love you if you are disobedient. What do I mean by that? Being that you are <clears throat> contrary, contrary or you walking in opposition of him. You are not keeping the commandments. You are not doing what he told you to do. Remember when I opened up about being a unruly child in a house. You can't love your parents. You got to show your parents that you love them by respecting their ordinance. We must agree on that. Now, the most high is our father. Okay. And our big brother is the Messiah. Who sprang out of the lineage of King David. Out of the tribe of Judah. Here. All right. <clears throat> Let's just go on and start this now. I'm going to be in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3. So let's clear this matter up. Okay. <clears throat> For this is the love, all right, whom y'all call God. For this is the love of the almighty power. God just means power, the ultimate power. You got the lowercase g, which means just Elo Elohims or angels. Then you got the big G. This is the almighty power. The big kahuna. All right. For this is the love of the almighty power. That we keep his commandments. This, this is how you show him you love him. Okay. For this is the love of the almighty power. That we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. So this is the scriptures talking. This is the word of the most high. So I will never give you my own opinion. And no Israelite brother that is trying to bring forth a message and representation of the Most High, our Creator, our Father, should be should should be doing it either. Anything they say should be referenced from our forefathers who get it straight from the Most High. That's who the Most High was dealing with then. Now it's us who He's dealing with. Okay, for it's written that He will visit us in these days and put his spirit out upon us that we may prophesy in the captivity wherever we at throughout the four corners of the earth to wake up his babies and bring them back to him so he can judge the world 
But first he got to seal his elect. Okay, and by sitting the elect, there's a governing body inside of the elect. So you got a chosen. Once they're once the elect is sealed, they're chosen. But it's a chosen inside of that chosen. You get your 144,000 governing body out of that. All right. But let's move on, family, because I can be in this all night. All night. But all praise, honor, and glory go to the most high. Yahweh by Shem Shah. Once again, I thank him. I appreciate you, Father. I love you. Shalom. Shalom. Okay, Israel. Let's get in this once again. <clears throat> we must come back to our father. And when we come back, just like when you kicked your kids out your house, if they come back and they tell you they're sorry, they acknowledge their offense, well, they got to show you. They got to show you. I just read it right there in the, in the book that it says, for this is the love of the most high, the almighty power that we keep his commandments. So when they come back to you, they should be keeping your commandments, all right? But your commandments as a so-called Negro, a so-called Native American, a so-called Hispanic, which are the children of Israel, which are the children of the promise, your commandments should be lined up with the most highest commandments. <clears throat> you shouldn't have a different set of commandments. He didn't give us but one commandment, <clears throat> okay? One commandment, right? Right? When we got out of Egypt, remember that? And if you don't, you know the story of Israelites coming out of Egypt? Once they came out of Egypt, the most I tried to, he ain't tried, he was forming them to be a nation. Just being born. Newborn baby. This modern day America would be modern day Egypt. It's on the back of the dollar bill. It's pyramids everywhere. Da 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 da. But we're going to be going through that. But this is spiritual Egypt, according to the Bible, y'all. I'll be all over the place, and I'll never get this done if I keep pulling those precepts. But anyway, let's read in the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 16. It goes, one law and one manner shall be for you and for the stranger that sojourn up. All right? All right? So one law. You know, so your household laws should be lined up with the most high's laws and everything will be cool. If not, the most high already have did a, 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 a work on his children by having us over here in subjection under these people continuously getting beat down in the streets over here. They got us so crazy they done tricked us. We kill each other. We look at each other like we're the enemy. We have acquired the ways of our oppressor. How do we do it? Because the oppressor run everything. He run everything. He set up shop. He allow us to come into the music industry, make music, make records. These records that our people make now and been making, all of them are ang angled at each other as far as we selling drugs to each other, as far as we calling our women B's and H's and calling our brothers N-I-G-G-A's and we said we'll kill him and we'll do this or you know all this is implied or implemented in that music and when that music goes out to our people and they bounce in their head and they're doing all this they acquire those spirits they take on them spirits next thing you know they trying to do what the, the rap songs say and you end up killing one of your brothers mm-hmm they don't finish telling you if you do do that, you're going to get life in jail. They just tell you, OK, I'm going to do this to him because he did this or anybody do this to me. I'm going to put 50 rounds in him and, you know. We've been deceived, y'all. But for the most part, <clears throat> they really got us for with these these rappers, these sisters and these brothers out here, this new age. Um, Agenda, y'all see the agenda. Men on men, women on women. Uh, all of us coming through the rap music and we bounce our head to it. You know, the babies bouncing their head to it. And next thing you know, we walking around of that agenda, man. But anyway, with that being said, <clears throat> we better repent. As a people, we better repent. It's not an asking, it's not a question. 
It's a commandment. Thus says the Most High. So with no further ado, in repenting, come back to your father. And I'm going to go through this prayer. And this can help in times when you're alone. You know, um, these words are words of honesty. They are words of uh, sincerity. Because this brother truly, truly confessed his sins. Okay? This is what he did. Salakia. Salakia, Israel. One second here. Okay? Give me one second. Mm -hmm. Give me one second, family. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Give me one second. Oh, you know, I can't hardly see this. That's one one thing about this book. It's got small letters, very very small letters. Family. Okay. Okay. So. This prayer. Let's say, I'm saying, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, I was trying to find this precept to uh, go forth. That's what we do. We like to go precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. When I say here a little, and in the Bible, there a little. So we can definitely get a uh, full understanding of what's being brought forth, okay? That still says the most high, not me. We can find that in Isaiah, the 28th chapter, the 9th verse through the 10th verse, what I just said, you can, you can find that, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Okay. Okay. So I'm looking for that precept. All right, family. So anyway, we'll move on. The most I want me to get it, he'll bring it to me. I can't get it <clears throat> off the top of my head right now. Let's see if we can bring it up. <coughs> Excuse me, it's a lot. Okay. Oh no, that ain't the one. Mm -mm. Okay, we'll move on. All right, um, let's get started once again. I'm gonna be coming out the text. The text is called the prayer of Manassas. Okay, King of Judah. <clears throat> and guess what? Guess what? Guess what he was. Once again, I told you guys in the scriptures. And oh my goodness, in the scriptures, this is modern day Egypt, modern day Sodom, and modern day Babylon. We're going to get that as we continue to go through these messages that will definitely be brought out. That's on the hot plate for the family. But I'm going to put this up there. You see where he was? Where, uh, right up under where it says the prayer of Manasseh, king of Judah. When he was holding captive in Babylon, he was in prison. I mean, not, well, you can say prison because we're over here in this cage over here. We're in prison. We're still in prison. We're in servitude. We on, we in, we are under subject, subjection mm -hmm. of the so-called Europeans, the so-called modern-day Romans, Esau, Edom, Rome, whatever you want to call it, Grecians. That's where we at, okay? So let me go and move forward, family. <clears throat> this is what our brother said, and this is why he was in captivity, okay? We're still in captivity. 
I know y'all think y'all not, but we still in captivity, family. All right? So it goes. Almost high, Yahweh. Almighty power of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those are our forefathers. Those are, I'm going to keep saying that. Those are our forefathers, not Benjamin Franklin, Teddy Roosevelt, and uh, 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 George Washington. Those are not our forefathers. We got our own. We need to claim them. We need to uphold them. We need to reverence them. Okay? Those are our forefathers. The greatest men that ever walked the planet. They are. Mm hmm. Because they walk with the most high. All right? These guys did. This is why, this is what makes you guys so special. This is why every nation won't tell you who you are and they continue to set up shops in your neighborhood and take your money. They won't tell you, they know who you are. You just don't know who you are. Let's get it, family. Oh, Yahweh, almighty power of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of the righteous seed, mm -hmm, the righteous seed, that's a people, who has made heaven and earth with all the with all the ornament thereof, all right? Who has bound the sea by the word of thy commandment. That's right, see, they following commandments. The heavens, the seas, fowls of the air, the creepy crawly things on earth, they follow commandments. The only one not following commandments is the children of Israel. But that remnant who's coming back, they are struggling, they are striving to do the will of the Father. And this message is going out to anybody that hasn't wholeheartedly accepted that they are the children of Israel to come back and join the family. Let's do what we're supposed to do because this family, this remnant, we want out of here. We don't, we tired of subjection. We tired of watching our people getting killed. We want the most high to come rain nothing but fire down on this place, which he said he's going to do anyway. But if you are part of the nation, when he do it, then you cannot be saved. Remember that? Redeemed, delivered, saved. You cannot be saved until the Most High spread his wings and cover you after, until his wrath is over or his indignation passes over the world or the earth. He will cover you. But he can't cover you if you out there running around naked. He's not coming looking for you. He's got the covering. You need to go to the covering. This is simple right here, y'all. Let's get back in it. Oh, um, oh, most high Yahweh, almighty power of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of, their, and of their righteous seed, which is the children of Israel, who has made heaven and earth with all the ornament, with all the ornament thereof, okay? With all the ornament thereof. Who has bound the sea by the word of thy commandment? Who has shut up the deep and sealed it by thy terrible and glorious name? Once again, his name is terrible and glorious. It's not just one way, not just love. <laughs> He's not just love. All right. Who has shut up the deep. All right who has shut up the deep and sealed it by thy terrible and glorious name, whom all men fear. And if they don't, they're going to find out. They're going to find out the hard way, especially the so-called Negro, because judgment started our house first. Okay? Judgment starts with us first because we are his kids. When you go out and you want to punish some children out in the world that's doing bad, you punish your own. You don't go out putting your hands on nobody else's kids. You punish your own kids, right? Most high do the same thing. We got to get this, family. This ain't no fairy tale. All right? All right? Once again, who has shut up the deep and sealed it by thy terrible and glorious name, whom all men fear and tremble 
before thy power. You see that, family? Ain't that nice about that? For the majesty of thy glory cannot be born, mean carry. Like ancient idols. They were majestic. Those other nations, they, their gods, because they got their gods. They Everywhere they go, even today, in the churches, you got big statues of so-called Jesus, a white, so-called white Jesus in these churches. If that church shut down, sad to say that ain't the most high church. If the church shut down and they ain't paid their rent, they got to go. Okay, they got to take that, that so-called statue with them. Okay, just a statue. But people fall to their knees and worship it. All right. But that's what the word born means. B-O-R-N-E. Okay, to be carried. And thine anger threatening towards sinners is importable. He's angry towards sinners, y'all. Remember, we were taught God hate the sin. God love the sinner, but hate the sin. Remember that? I wouldn't talk that. I just heard that because I hadn't been in church in multitude of years. But I've heard that over and over and over regurgitated throughout the so-called African-American community. And it is crazy. And I didn't know no better until I started reading the scriptures and saw it just to see how much, how deep of this rabbit hole went. All right. Threatening towards sinners is importable. But thy merciful promise is unmeasurable. That's right, because we can't even fathom. But the promises are written in the scriptures. There's a whole lot of promises for the children of the promise. They are written in the scriptures, and we're going to deal with that also, family. We're going to deal with that one at a time, though. All right, one at a time. But thy merciful promise, promise is unmeasurable and unsearchable. Right. But the world was made for our sake. We just fell off. For thou art the most high, Yahweh, of great compassion, long suffering, very merciful, and repentance of the evils of men. Thou O Yahweh, according to, the, to thy great goodness, has thou promised repentance and forgiveness to them that have sinned against thee. So he has promised. That's one of the promises for the children of the promise that we were granted repentance for sins. Because he could have just killed us and done away with us altogether. He is the creator. You know, he is the creator. We are the fruit of the garden. If he's so not to, to pick the fruit and let the fruit just die off, that's his, that's, that's to his discretion. He can do that, but he wants us to live. It's us that choose death, meaning walk contrary to him. And you're choosing death coming up when you're about to allow these people to proceed with this vaccination. You don't know what's in that vaccination, but I got that. Be careful, family. Be very, very careful. Pay attentive. Be attentive. All right. At some point, we got to wake up. We better wake up quick, too, because time is running. It's clean out. All right. For thou art the most high, Yahweh, of great compassion, long suffering, very merciful, and repentance, repentance of the evils of men. Thou. O Yahweh, according to thy great goodness, has promised repentance and, for, and forgiveness to them that have sinned against thee, and of thine infinite mercies has appointed repentance unto sinners, see, that they may be saved. Saved from what? Saved from what? We're going to deal with that. Okay? That they may be saved. We're going to deal with that a little bit further down in the text. Because we got to get this. I know the so-called Christians grew up saying they're saved, they're saved. I, I, that's another one, man. It's just we regurgitate so much madness and we put it out there. 
And that's that's very negative energy and it's, it's falsehood and it's lies. You're not saved from nothing. The most high haven't even judged the world yet. How can you be saved if you go going to church on Sunday and you still got this European image in your mind and you still eating pork, crab, lobster, smoking weed? How can you be saved? That ain't keeping the commandments of the most high. That don't that's not showing the most high that you love him. We read that at the beginning of this this um video right here. How to love the most high and what the requirements are to love the most high. That's to keep his commandments. I didn't write it. My forefathers wrote it and they got it from generation through generation, because that's our heritage. It was passed down through the heritage. And we still got it. It's in my hand now. All right. The text were preserved for us to do the will of the Most High. Please believe that, family. All right. Let's finish. Okay. Um, and of thy mercies has appointed repentance unto sinners that they may be saved. Thou, therefore, O Yahweh, thou art the almighty power of the just, has not appointed repentance to the just. So he is the almighty power of the just, has not appointed repentance to the just. Why is that? Because the law was made for sinners, not for the righteous, for sinners. Right? Wow. The law was made for sinners, not for the righteous. Remember that, family. All right. So once again, O Yahweh, thou art the almighty power of the just. All right. Has not appointed repentance to the just. As to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Which have not sinned against thee. But thou has appointed repentance unto me that am a sinner. So this is what we must confess. Tell the Most High, confess to the Most High, and acknowledge the fact that he has appointed repentance to us. Acknowledge the fact that we are sinners, that we have sinned a million times over, okay? For I have sinned above the number of the sands of the sea. You see? But he's confessing his sins. He's coming to his father. He's coming to Abba Hawa, Abba Nawa Yahweh. He's coming. He's confessing his sins. He says, For I have sinned above the number of the sands of the sea. Wow. My transgressions, and I feel the same way, family. And I still ask the most how to forgive me for when I look back into my past. I need to be forgiven because most of the time, a lot of times, he come back and he visits you in your dream, especially when you're in this truth now. If you weren't in the truth, and if you dreamed a crazy dream, it wasn't no deal to you because that's how you was living. That's the life you was living. But when you when you come back to repentance and those dreams pop up from past times, they that's like hunting you. They're coming to hunt you. They're coming to hunt you, man. So... You can't, you don't escape anyway, you know. So, hey, he says, my transgressions, oh, Yahweh, are multiplied. Mm -hmm. My transgressions are multiplied. He said, he said, he's acknowledging, hey, he's humble. He said his transgressions have multiplied so much he done did and so much we done did. Just look around and look at our people, man. If anybody out there telling me, that we are following the ways of the Most High as a nation of people, man. Y'all in trouble, and y'all better watch out, because the Most High coming, and he ain't gonna play the radio. He ain't gonna play the radio, okay? Oh, Yahweh. Let's see. My transgressions, oh, Yahweh, are multiplied. My transgressions are multiplied, and I am not worthy to behold and see the height of heaven for the multitude of my iniquities. So he acknowledged the fact that he can't go to heaven just for the sins 
that he've committed. But yet and still, we can go out and do all kind of crazy and madness out here in this world and go to a funeral once again and say that somebody's in a better place. This man ain't repentant. He don't even know the most high. When I said no, have a relationship. And I ain't talking about the Christian mind. Everybody out there in the world so, oh, I got a personal relationship with the most high. I don't see that in the scriptures nowhere. We are a nation of people. We're supposed to be on one accord with the most high. I don't know, man. We've been bamboozled, though. But let's get it. And I am not worthy to behold and see the height of heaven for the multitude of mine iniquities. And I am bowed down with many iron bands hmm, that I cannot lift up mine head. Man, the man, so the man done sin so much, he ashamed to even lift up his head and ask for forgiveness. He's ashamed to even lift up his head and ask for forgiveness. But he got a good spirit, man, and he's honest. And that's what we need to be. We need to be honest. And the Most High can help us. He can help preserve us to be saved. Preserve us to be saved. All right? Because when his wrath come, it come like a whirlwind. Like a tempest. Okay. I am bowed down with many iron bands that I can that I cannot lift up mine hand, mine head, Salakia. Neither have any release. You know. Fire provoked thy wrath. Mm. For I have provoked thy wrath and done evil before thee. Hmm. I did not the will. I did not thy will. You see? I did not thy will. I didn't keep your commandments, Most High. I was doing what I wanted to do. I did me. I was celebrating Christmas. I was eating pigs. I was celebrating Valentine's Day. I was celebrating my birthday. I was celebrating the dead. You know how y'all can celebrate the dead? When you go out there on the street, and somebody die in a car accident, I'm just giving one prime example. And you make a memorial right there with a cross, which ain't got nothing to do with the Bible, with a cross, and you continue to walk by there, go by there, putting flowers down there, flowers down there. That's worshiping the dead. That's honoring the dead. It don't matter who it is. You keep going to the graveyard when ain't nothing there, nobody there but you. I used to do it. I didn't do all of that memorializing with the cross on when, you know, wherever the, the person died at. People now following the heathen, the nations, the Europeans, they put that junk out there. And now we do it. We'll go put a cross on the street wherever somebody died in a car accident or whatever, however, gunshot. You put a cross right there and you continue to go by and put, keep putting flowers right there for a memorial. But that's honoring the dead and the most high of this bible the god of israel he's the god of the living not the god of the dead now if you want to honor the dead that's an old ancient egyptian custom egyptian that and you you hear our people love to say that um they worship the ancestors right all people love to say you know, they talk to the ancestors or we disrespecting the ancestors, the ancestors, the ancestors are dead, man. They are dead. They pushing up daisies. I'm just saying, man, we don't know what we talking about. Some of the stuff we say, but that's witchcraft. That's witchcraft. And in the scriptures, the most High said we should not suffer or wish to live. See, I can't pull all these scriptures because I got some more scriptures I got to pull over him. But that's witchcraft, man. And we do it. Everything we do is contrary to the Most High as a people. This is why I'm bringing this out, family. The man is acknowledging the fact. Okay? 
He said, I did not thy will, neither kept I thy commandments. See, he ain't do what the Most High said do. He know that. He said, I was doing what I wanted to do, however I wanted to do it. If I wanted to have six, seven different women in one week, that's what I did. You know what I mean? Or vice versa, six, seven men in one week, eight, nine men in one week. That's what I'm going to do. If I want to lay with a woman, that's what I'm going to do as a woman. If I'm a man, I want to lay with a man, that's what I'm going to do. If I want to just start peddling around with little kids and I'm a grown man, that's what I'm going to do. It's just I'm going to do my will. And when you do your will, you're doing the will of Satan. Because he's the one came here ushering, usher, ushering in, do thy will. That is their thing. Living your best life. That ain't got nothing to do with the most high. That's contrary and that's a dangerous thing in these times because the clock is ticking so fast, family. I'm telling y'all and proclaiming to you so called Israelites or so called Negroes, so called African American people, and you so called Hispanics, and you so called natives, native Indians on this side of the water, man. Come back to your power, man. Repent like this brother right here is acknowledging. The fact that he has not did the will of the Most High. Please do that. That's our job. That's my job. Because I know who I am now and I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be repenting and I'm supposed to be going out telling the people to repent. That's what the deal is. Okay. Once again, he said, I did not. I did not thy will. Neither kept I thy commandments. All right. I have set up abominations and have multiplied offenses because it's an abomination to worship the dead. That's, that's an abomination. So we got to snap out of this stuff, y'all. We got to snap out of this stuff. Hey, it's an abomination. It's a major sin having family, family reunions because it's breaking. It's a breaking of the law. All right. You're honoring other gods what gods what is he talking about no we're not we're just going to a family union okay well whatever your last name is that's the last name that you guys are honoring when you all show up and have a very 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 good time you're having this party around that last name or in the name of that name whatever your last name is that would be considered worshiping idol worship or honoring other gods, other people that's in control. And they were definitely in control because that's how you acquired your last name. So now you turn around and honor it. We got to think about these things, family. We must. Here it goes again. I have set up abominations and have multiplied offenses. And over and over, we continuously just keep multiplying sin on top of sin on top of sin. You go to the family reunion. You go to, you do Easter. You know what I'm saying? You do 4th of July. You do Juneteenth. That's one of the, one of the, man, it's so much that's set up to keep us so far away from our father, from the creator, from the God of Israel. It is so much implemented. But we got people that's set up to keep us away from the Most High because they know that if we come back to the Most High, Wickedness will die and righteousness will live, but people love wickedness. They love it. They love it. They do not want to do the will of the Most High. They want to do free will. They want to do what they want to do. You know, that's it. But the first time something happens to them, they call on the Creator. That's as backwards as it gets. The Creator said, when your calamities come, I'm going to laugh at you. When you laid up in the hospital, I'm going to laugh at you. When your grandmama laid up and you crying, I'm going to laugh at you. I'm not going to hear you. You didn't respect me. Don't, don't think that you can respect me when you get good and ready. Once again, when your children disrespect you by doing all this stuff inside your house and you put them out, they can't come back any old kind of way. So why do you think you can treat, can treat the creator the same way? What is it with that man? Where is that mind? What's up with that mindset? That's the mindset of the great Satan. That's a rebellious mindset. 
that's a rebellious mindset. You got to pay for that. Okay? So watch this. I have set up abominations, plural, and have multiplied, multiplied offenses. Now, therefore, I bow down, I bow down the knee of mine heart. See? Now, therefore, I bow down the knee of mine heart. And heart in the Bible is this right here, your mind. He said, now, now, therefore, I bow down, I bow the knee of mine heart. Beseeching, he said, Salakia. Now, therefore, I bow the knee of mine heart, beseeching thee of grace. All right. Begging for grace. I have sinned. Almost high. I have sinned. Okay. So. This is. A, a brother again. He acknowledging the fact. You know. He, he, he feel real bad. Very very bad. Now he looking for forgiveness. From the father. But he know he's an Israelite. From the tribe of Judah. He know that. See, he knew the law. This one did. All people don't know the law. But if you come across this video, you're going to get it before this video. Over. You're going to get some of it anyway. Okay? All right? So again, it says, I have sinned. Almost high, Yahweh. I have sinned. And I acknowledge my iniquities. That's how you repent. But just by acknowledging ain't enough. You got to stop doing whatever it was that you are confessing to the Father. Stop doing it. Don't do it no more. That's hand in hand, right? I have sinned, O Yahweh. I have sinned, and I acknowledge mine iniquities. Wherefore, I humbly beseech you, beseech thee, forgive me. Forgive me, Father. O Yahweh, forgive me. And destroy me not with mine iniquities. And you don't want to die in your sin, because then you got to go to judgment before him after you done died, and you didn't even repent before you died. So what can you say in the sight of the Creator, the one who judges all things, the quick and the dead? What can you say and you died in your sins. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. And it, it, the time ain't when you get people, once again, another fable. People on their dying bed in the hospital will say that he made peace with his creator. Oh, at the last minute? Hmm, okay. At the last minute, a mass murderer. All right. A, a mass murderer. Laying there about to die. All of a sudden, he made peace with his creator. So that's going to allow him to enter into the presence of the Most High. It's not there, man. The man even spoke of it in this right here. He says right here, I'm going to go back up there. He says, and I am not worthy to behold and see the height of heaven for the multitude of my iniquities. So don't let nobody lie to you because I'm reading out the scriptures. I'm not just going off of regurgitated, uh, inherited foolishness. I ain't doing that. I'm just reading out the text and I'm trying to help the family and for the newcomers coming in to believe in the word of the most high. Okay. Don't believe in your parents. Don't believe in your grandparents. Don't believe in your teacher. Don't believe in your pastor. Don't believe in your supervisor. Don't believe in yourself. You don't know nothing, especially if you're a so-called Negro or so-called Hispanic or so-called Native American. You don't know nothing. You don't even know who you are. You don't even know why all these calamities coming upon you. You have no idea why you're going through the stuff that you go through for over 400 and some odd years over here. You have no clue, man. I'm bringing the clue to you. I'm trying to help y'all. And there's a ton of more brothers and sisters out there trying to help and i'm praying that y'all here before the door shuts that's just it because that's the will and that's the work that we're supposed to be doing 
we don't supposed to just get this knowledge and keep it to ourselves. We're supposed to be out here gathering up these sheep. I'm a sheep. We got a shepherd. His name is Amashiach Yahweh Shah, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He sprang out of the tribe of Judah. That's our shepherd. That's our king. And we are commanded to go out and get his sheep. He said, feed my sheep. Feed them what? Feed them the truth. What truth? According to my word, every word, not what the pastor said. You tell my people, you take them here, man, and read to them and tell them what I say and what I require. That's just it. And nothing else. Don't put your opinion in it. Screw that. You just do what I tell you to do and everything will work out for you. Okay? That's all. That's how that goes, y'all. So let's get it again. Be not angry with me. Okay, let's let's go back up. I humbly beseech thee, forgive me, O Yahweh, forgive me, and destroy me not with mine iniquities. That's right. Be not angry with me forever, please, Most High. This is what we should be asking, y'all. This is what we should be saying when we're praying. All right. This is this is serious business, man. Okay, be not angry with me forever by reversing huh? what he said. I'm sorry, be not angry with me forever by reserving evil for me. By reserving evil for me, neither condemn me into the lower parts of the earth, into darkness. Don't condemn me into the lower parts of the earth. For thou art the almighty power, even the almighty power of them that repent. Okay. Okay. So let's see. I want to go back up. I want to go back up. And let's see here. Because I slept on something. Because I want to bring it out. Let's go back up to um, where it says, I am bowed down with many iron bands that I cannot lift up mine head, neither have any release. For I have, I have pro provoked thy wrath. And we have provoked the wrath of the Most High because our people are still getting shot down and killed and trampled and, 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 and you name it in these streets. And these people going home scot-free. How is that possible? How is that possible? Like they like to say in the streets, where they do that at? They do it in America. They do it in the Ukraine. All right? They do it wherever the children of Israel are. Because we still, until the Most High seal up his election, under the curses of the Most High. And by being under the curses of the Most High, this brother right here just said, he said, I have provoked thy wrath. So y'all, I'm telling y'all, I just broke down some of what the wrath is. Let's get it in the Bible now. Let's see what the wrath of the Most High is. You think I'm joking? All people dying out here in these streets out here. Y'all see it with your own two eyes. You think it's you think it's just man doing what he want to do? This is the wrath of the Most High, because the Most High works through man, just like He worked through us to give us His laws, statutes, and commandments to go out and teach the world. He saw He also works through man. On the left hand side. Okay. Come on. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28, 48 through 50. Okay. Okay. And first of all, let, 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 let's go there. All right. Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 48 through 50. This is the wrath the brother was saying. He said, I have provoked thy wrath. And we should be saying that too when we're praying. Like, we have provoked your wrath. We want this to stop, Most High. We want this to stop because we can't beat the beast. That's a beast. That's an animal. We cannot beat him. Period. You can die for the cause. 
but we talking about flipping that whole situation. The most high is our power. He always has been and he always will be. We just got to know that we're the children of Israel. And when you go back in the text on the scriptures, you find out that he's always been our power, always been our army, always been our right arm, our strength. Okay? I'm just trying to help them. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48 through 50. Therefore, shall thou serve thine enemies. That's plural. Which the most high Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, shall sin against thee. See, he's working through man. He said he's going. You're going to serve your enemy. Serve him. Ain't we over here in servitude still? Let's find out. No man, I'm good. I'm I'm free. I make a hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. I'm good. That money got somebody else's face on it, man. When you in rulership. It's going to have the face, your face on it. It's going to look like you. All right? That's when you know you're good. You ain't good if your money got some homosexual on it. That's what you proclaiming, though, but you good. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48 says, Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Most High shall send against thee in hunger. So when you're hungry, don't you got to go to uh, Kroger, Whole Foods, to the Halil Market? Who owns the Halil Market? It ain't us. Muhammad do. Oh, Muhammad is my friend. I'm in Islam. Muhammad was a prophet. Muhammad was a prophet. Oh, boy, here we go. Let's read it again. Verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Most High, Yahweh, shall sin against thee. See, this is craftiness. They sit there with a smile and receive that money, but shop is set up. These people know who you are, man. It's even written in the Quran that we are the children of Israel, but we still got Negroes that won't let it go. They will still rather serve an Arab God. That's the God of the Arab, Allah is. They don't believe in totality what's written in these scriptures for the children of Israel, but they acknowledge the fact that we are the children of Israel because they're the seed of Ishmael. See? But the scriptures say, look, let's move on. Well, that's a whole other story. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Most High shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst. So when you're hungry, you got to go to the Chinese, get some food. Got to go to the Europeans to get some food. The East Indians to get some food. Once again, you got to go to <laughs> Muhammad to get that food. Those are your enemies. You got to go to them in hunger and in thirst. You even got about water. And they catch you trying to get water from the sky and put it in and, and just stand out there and keep getting water in a bucket or in, in some containers. They'll lock you up for that. They'll lock you up for getting water out the sky. Mm hmm Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies that the most high will sin against thee. So that's what I was saying. He worked through man. It's the work of the Most High. If you're getting choked out in the street, shot down in the street, or whatever is going on, it's the Most High said he's going to send. Since we don't want to obey his word, this is that wrath that that brother was just speaking about in that prayer. You have to serve your enemies that the Most High will send against, the, against you in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. You got to get your clothes from them. You know, you got to go to Macy's, you got to go to the mall, South of Cab, you got to go to the mall or Cumberland, you got to go to wherever mall you go to. Getting your clothes offline, Walmart, you got to serve your enemies. The shop is already set up by your enemies. You is in servitude. With that little money you, you think you got, one thing about it, 
the more and more money, I keep saying this, the more money you make, the further away you get away from the Most High Yahweh, which is the God of the so-called Negroes, the God of the so-called Hispanics, the God of the so-called Native American people. That's just that, man. This is all a scheme to keep you away from your power. And you are powerless without him. And without him, you you will claim that you're an American. If you're in the army, you have sold yourself to that army. You are a straight out American. If you're on the police force, you sold yourself to it. You're a straight out American. And so forth and so forth, man. The more and more you entwine yourself with this place, the more f further you away you get from your creator. Okay? You ain't going to know how to pray to him. You'll be sitting down with your legs crossed, holding up triple six signs, or you'll be speaking in Arabic, praying in Arabic, instead of praying in the Hebrew to the God of Israel, the God of the so-called Negroes, man. And I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it because it's true. It's true. And it, and it goes on further to say, and in nakedness, and in want of all things, don't matter what it is, a car, driver's license, job, in want of all things, you got to go to them. We don't run nothing. You are employed by your employer. You don't run nothing. Even if you own a little store, you still got to pay homage to the man. Who, he can come swoop and buy that whole land and get you out of that. And even if you own land, you got to pay taxes. This ain't no game. Shop is set up, buddy. Shop is set up. Okay? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have and until he said he put a yoke of iron on our necks. Now that happened back in slavery. He put a yoke of iron on our necks. But for how long? Because we don't got none on our necks now. Let's see how long. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Once you were mentally destroyed, once you knew that if he took that yoke off or he allowed you to go out on the plantation and you weren't going to run nowhere, you were destroyed. You wouldn't run if you had the opportunity to run because you were scared that if you ran down the street, another one was going <laughs> to see you. Right? You were destroyed at that time. You were entrapped. You were snared by your enemy. And that's just over here on this side. You got the sub-Saharan slave trade where the uh, Islamic, the Islamics ruined us over there. That was over 1,500 years ago. And they still over there enslaving our people, enslaving our sisters. Go look it up. They still using our sisters for prostitutes over there. The Arabs are. Go look it up. In the name of our law. That's what they doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Verse 49. The Most High shall bring a nation against thee from far. Okay? From the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle fly. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's, the, that's the symbol of this country. The eagle. That's the, na that's, that's the nation he's talking about. Watch this. A nation whose tongue thou shall not understand. That's why you speak English now so good, because at one time you didn't understand what he was saying. Y'all was speaking broken Hebrew from the west coast of, or the western shores of West Africa. You still got brothers over there that's keeping the custom, the Hebrew custom, the best of their ability. They know who they are. They know who we are. We don't want to accept who we are. That's why you think you're from Africa. Because you fled into Africa, running from the Roman Empire back in 70 AD. You can do the research on that too. You can do the research on the Spanish Inquisition and find out what was going on with our people there at that time also. With the Portuguese and King George, the whole, the whole deal. Just do the research, family. It all links back up with the scriptures though. Okay? He says, this will be a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. And I brought those scriptures out 
only because this brother, this Ark right here, was saying that I have provoked thy wrath. And we did the same thing. We provoked the Most High. We provoked his wrath. We made him jealous. We pissed him off by worshiping other gods, worshiping, uh, following the nations, doing what the other nations do, proclaiming their way of life. We pissed him off. So what did he do? He sent a nation against us, a nation of fierce countenance that don't regard the old or the young. So now y'all out there marching. You asking the same one that's busting your brains open to help you keep being crazy. That is crazy. Cause if you jump down to this same book, okay, this same book, okay, that's crazy what you're doing. If you begging the same person to help you, that's killing you. That's madness. So book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 28 says, and the most high shall smite thee with madness. That's madness and blindness because you can't see. You can't see the forest for the trees. You don't know the enemy from your friend. You know, you can't tell. And astonishment of heart, meaning of mind. You have no idea, man. It done got so bad, you don't know. You don't know. That's why you're doing what you're doing. But let's go back into the text. Okay? Let's get back into the text. It says that um, I have provoked thy wrath and done evil before thee. And it's an evil thing to make the most high jealous. It's a dangerous thing to serve other gods. When he clearly tell you, thou shalt have no other gods before me. This is for the so-called Negroes, for the people who came out of Egypt. If y'all want to verify and solidify um, being a part of any other religion or any of that, that's on y'all. That's fine. But that's, that's just continuing the damage that the Most High have put upon us instead of y'all coming back to the power of the God of Israel. Repent and doing what we're supposed to be doing to help raise our people up out of these lies and out of this madness that I just read out of Deuteronomy 28. That'll be the will of the Father, man. Let's go. You know, I did, he said, for I have provoked thy wrath, and I done evil before thee. I did not thy will, neither kept I thy commandments. What commandments? What commandments? Hmm. They said the commandments are done away with. What commandments? Let's get some. Let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 20. All right. Oh, well, let's get this. I'm going to tell y'all a commandment y'all need to do. Anybody watching this video that's new coming in, you know, that's eating off the, off the plate of the most high. This is uh, this right here. This is it. I want y'all to see that. These are fringes. That's a ribbon of blue right there. Okay. Let's go to Book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Let's go to start at 37. And the Most High, Yahweh, spake unto Moses, mm -hmm. saying, what did he say? He said, speak unto the children of Israel and bid them, command them, that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. That means forever. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Throughout our generations, we're supposed to have been doing this, but every time we went into another nation, we start taking on their ways. We'll wear shirt and tie, you know what I'm saying? Like they used to, man, we'll wear it. Whatever that nation is, culture or custom is, we adapted to it. And that pissed the most high off. That just pissed him off. That provoked his wrath. And that's why he always, that's why he sent this, this beast all the way. Because he got fed up with us, man.
we refuse to do what he uh, told us to do. So I brought that scripture out once again. Sisters, you get your dresses, you put your little ribbon at the bottom of your dress at the, at the border down there. You know, you can put some fringes at the bottom of your dress. You know, dress in modesty according to uh, the book of uh, Titus. I think that's Titus. Um, just do the just do what we're supposed to do as a nation, as a nation. Okay. Let's just do what we're supposed to do as a nation. Let's stop being rebellious while we still got a time. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't want no more smoke from them. I don't. I don't want no more smoke from the Most High. Y'all don't want it neither. You don't know it or not. Believe it or not, you don't want that smoke. You don't want that. Because this the end game. He finna destroy everything. Only thing gonna be left is a a remnant. Just a remnant. Remember the days of Noah? Remember the time a lot? He wasn't saving a whole bunch of people. People were wicked, man. He got rid of them. Remember? Before we even got blessed to get the land to go into the land of Canaan, coming out of Egypt, he killed off Negro then. Because they still want to be like the Egyptians. That's why them Negro think they Egyptian. I can't blame you. If you stayed over there long enough, of course you think you're an Egyptian. Of course you love the land of Egypt, which is the house of bondage, slavery. Of course you love being a slave. It's like America. You, you proclaiming to be an American. You love this place. This is the house of bondage. You love being a slave. They done tricked you with a little bit of dollar, and you think you're free. You love being a Haitian. You love being a Jamaican. You love being a Mexican, a Puerto Rican, a Salvadorian, a Cuban. You love it. But that smoke in the most high nose, and that piss him off. Because you ain't giving him no glory. You ain't respecting him. You're not going out telling nobody that I am Israel. I am the son of the most high. You ain't doing that. You're giving your glory to another. You all up in Islam. You all up in Presbyterian. You all up in Seven Day Adventist. You all up in Jehovah Witness. Anything but telling the world that we are the children of Israel. That pissed the, the Most High off. And if I was a daddy, I'd be pissed off too. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. This ain't no disrespect, but all due respect to the Most High. You how by Hashem, you how shot by Hashem Rakaka. That's what the water. Thank you, Father. All due respect, man. No one else supposed to get no respect. Man is just a creature. I'm talking about the creator. That's who we supposed to be worshiping. That's who we supposed to be honoring. We supposed to be going out showing the world that we are the children of the almighty power. He chose us to do his will. And believe me, he gonna have a remnant that's gonna do his will. Cause it was preordained from the beginning to be that way anyway. Now, whether or not one of which brother or sister is going to be in that will, that's a whole other thing. But a will comes with an inheritance, is an inheritance, right? A will does. I want to be in the inheritance. Just did some a few hours back talking about that inheritance. Just a small, but it's another video talking about our heritage and inheritance. It's there. But if you don't want it, that's fine. He don't want you. You understand the book of Hosea chapter four, verse six. He don't want you. You know, if you don't want him, he don't want you. And it's a dangerous thing to fall in the hands of the almighty power, man. You out your mind. Y'all better get it right real fast, bro. Real fast. So I just quoted the book of Numbers chapter 15, verse 38 about going out, brothers, putting our fringes on the borders of your garments sisters put fringes on the borders of your dresses cover up your head get your hair wrapped be respectful tell the most how you sorry and you want to do the right thing it's madness man so it is what it is so i was saying that's just one law that's a law that's a commandment i wasn't just reading that that's a commandment for those who say 
away with. We only got that from church, from your from your pastor. I was about to say something. I'm be try to be respected, but he's the one that says the law is done away with. But he keep asking y'all to give him tithes, right? I thought the law was done away with. Tithing was a law, so you still keep the tithing law, but you're not gonna keep the law of fringes. You're not gonna keep the law of not eating pork, shrimp, crab, or lobster. You're not gonna keep the law that he said, "Don't break my Sabbath day." I'm gonna get it anyway. Go to the book of Exodus, chapter twenty. Exodus chapter 20. Okay. Listen to this, family. For those who don't know, listen to this. Okay. <clears throat> so, lucky. Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. And the Most High spake all these words, saying, I am the Most High, thy almighty power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Remember, I told y'all Egypt is the house of bondage, and we came over here. This is the house of bondage, slavery. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Ain't I been saying that? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. All right. Let me. The brother said in this passage right here. He said, I have set up abominations and I have multiplied offenses. Setting up gods, setting them up in your mind, okay, reverencing them, worshiping them, calling on them. Oh, wow. Thou shalt have no other gods before thee, okay? Satan don't want me to do this. Nope. It's a lot of family. Satan trying to stop me from doing this work. But it ain't going to happen. We're going to get through it. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Let's skip down. Let's skip down. Verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Most High Yahweh, Thy almighty power am a jealous almighty power, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And the only way you can hate the Most High is doing opposite of what we brought out in the beginning when I told you what the love of the Most High was. And that's keeping his commandments. If you don't keep his commandments, in his eyes, he said, you hate me. That's right. If that, that's clear, right? He said he's visiting the iniquity, visiting the iniquity of the children of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So a generation could be 10 years, 100 years, or 1,000 years. Okay? So we still bear, bearing the butt whipping from our forefathers. All right? So let's jump down to verse 8. Another law. I'm reading out of the law. This is the book of the law. This whole book is a book of law. I don't know what we missed it, but you're going to get it today. This whole book is the book of the law. All right. Verse eight says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, meaning set apart, different from all other days. Remember the Sabbath day, he said. Why he had to say that? Because he knew they was coming out of Egypt and he knew that their head was full of roller coasters, picnics, family, reun family reunions barbecues all of that club I don't think all this stuff you're doing new ain't nothing new under the sun he says remember the sabbath day to keep it set apart different all right six days shall thou labor and do all thy work he says but the seventh day is the sabbath of the most high yahweh by shimmy howard shy the almighty power in it thou shalt not do any work no working on the Sabbath day, family. And the Sabbath day is the seventh day. He just said it. But the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Most High, your almighty power. In it, thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So it don't really matter. If you're on a farm, 
You got horses and cattle out there. You, if you chilling on the Sabbath day, don't worry about them. Ain't no going out plowing on mule, plowing on mule, or, or, or plowing and making no ox work, making no nothing work. They supposed to be resting too, because you supposed to be in control of the creatures, or, or, of the animals. Israel, you are Adam. You're the creation, first creation. You supposed to be in charge of everything. Okay, He gave it to you. He gave you his laws. These laws are universal. You're supposed to be setting the standard. That's why he said the seventh day is the seventh day of the most high. You shall do no work in it. You and your family, no son, no daughter, no nothing. You're supposed to teach this to throughout your generation. See, we didn't know this because we were too busy going to church on Sunday, you know, being the seed, worshiping other gods. Because he can't be in Sunday church. If he said the seventh day is the seventh day, and that don't mean go out and make up a religion called Seventh Day Adventist or Jehovah's Witness. He ain't tell us to go make up no religions. All he did was gave us laws and commandments and a way of life. He didn't tell us to make up Pentecostal and Baptist and all the rest of this foolishness. It's madness. It's madness. And these are just some of the laws. And I brought that out because the brother said right here, he said, neither kept I thy commandments. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. Let's, I just brought that out. I don't want to stay too much longer. Let's go to Leviticus 11, 7 through 9. All right. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7 through 9. And the swine, though it divide the hoof and be clothed footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you, so called Negro, so called Hispanic, so called Native American, the swine, the pig. It's a commandment, y'all. It's a commandment. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. So I know y'all just had chitlin' day day before yesterday. I used to eat it too. All that pork chop, ham, pig feet, all that foolishness. I used to eat all that junk. But I love the most high more. When I found out who I was and what I was supposed to be doing, I cast away all that stuff. All the stuff that I learned over here in modern day Egypt. All the stuff I learned over here in modern day Babylon. I casted it away. No more. I was done with it. Okay. I learned how to respect the most high, and I'm still learning right now today. Okay. Of their flesh shall you not eat, and their carcasses shall you not touch. They are unclean to you. Verse 9. These shall you eat all that are in the waters. Now, this is seafood, y'all. Whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall you eat. So if it don't have fins and scales, you don't supposed to be eating it. And ain't no crab got no fins and no scales. No lobster got fins and scales. No shrimp got skin, I mean, or fins or scales. No clams, no mussels. I used to eat all that. Man, I used to love it. I bought it by the pounds. Pounds and pounds. Biggest lobster tails I could find. Biggest shrimp I could find. Biggest crab legs I could find. Crab legs were three feet tall. King crab legs reached up all the way up to the wall, big ones. I used to eat it, man, but I couldn't because I love the most high more than I love my own pleasures. I had to give it up, but that's the sacrifice. That's the offering that I had to bring to the most high, an offering of obedience. Okay? And this is what we, the message that we continue to teach, being obedient to him, not to man. You know, we do all that trying to, the man, <laughs> look, man, his delicacies are not the delicacy, delicacies of the most high. All right. Everything man do is contrary to what I just read you and what I've been reading. So what is that? It's abominable, man. We've been deceived. We've been tricked. We've been tricked and we're still being tricked because we're still following man. It's just that simple, y'all. So I'm trying to help, man. I'm trying to do my part, most high. 
Okay, I'm going to go read verse 27 and 30. See what that's all about. Because I know my granddad and them and my uncles and all them like to eat squirrels. They like to eat possum. They love turtle soup. All that foolishness when they were living. I still hear Negroes today talking about squirrels. Young brothers. But they don't know no better. So let's read it. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 27. And whatsoever goeth, goeth upon his paws like dogs among all manner of beasts that go on all four. Those are unclean unto you. Whoso touches their carcass shall be unclean even unto the evening. And this is a Levitical law. So the priest had to be clean. You can't even touch it. Verse 28. And he that beareth the carcass of them shall shall wash shall wash let's let's jump down salakia verse 29 these also shall be unclean to you among the creepy things that creep upon the earth the weasel and the mouse you know who's eating the mouse if you don't we got negroes in west africa and nigeria israelites eat mouses bigger than that sign back there big mouses you thought the chinese eat rat man they eat big rats over in nigeria it is an abomination. That's why this is written here. It's written here. It's right here. It said, don't eat no weasel. He said, and the mouse and the tortoise, that's a turtle, after his kind, anything like that. And the ferret and the chameleon and the lizard and the snail and the mole. These are unclean to you among all that creep. Whosoever does touch them when they be dead, shall be unclean until the evening so don't do it don't do it just don't do it love the most high more than your own will man because you're going to be destroyed that's the end game okay let's move on let's move on we're almost there all right so now therefore i bow the knee of my heart beseeching thee of grace all right i have sinned oh yahweh i have sinned and i acknowledge my iniquities and i do and i still have to clean it up i still got to clean it up i'm not perfect i'm striving though i'm gonna strive for the truth and to death all right that's what we should be doing i acknowledge my iniquities wherefore i humbly beseech thee Forgive me, O Yahweh, forgive me, and destroy me not with mine iniquities. Okay? And destroy me not with mine iniquities. Be not angry with me forever by reserving me, by reserving evil to me, for me. Neither condemn me into the lower parts of the earth, for thou art the almighty power, even the almighty power of them that repent. So he has also got room for us to come back home and repent. That's what I've been talking about. So let's get into that right quick. Acts 3, chapter 19. And this is for y'all, brothers and sisters. We got to come back. We got to repent. It's just that simple. We're going to get put to death. And that second death even worse than the first. Okay. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. All right. It simply said, we'll read it and we'll move on, okay? Acts chapter 3, verse 19 says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, and that'll change you. You don't have to be eating swine no more. You know, you don't have to eat the rat no more. Mouse, you don't have to eat crab legs, you don't have to eat shrimp. Lobsters, I know we love it, chitlins, but you got to repent, man. You got to repent. That You got to repent. Before you die, you need to repent. Because if you don't, I don't know what you're going to say to the Most High. And I advise you not to make up no excuses. That's the last thing you need to do. But why wait till you did, after you did, to try to tell the truth? Live it. We're supposed to be the walking truth in the earth. Walking. We're supposed to be a light to the world. That's what we're teaching, y'all. Repent ye, therefore, and be converted. That your sins may be blotted out. See, that's what I'm saying. This is before you die. That your sins may be blotted out. This is in the New Testament. See, they, they said the, 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 they said the laws are done away with. 
We're in the book of Acts. Somebody lying, man, and it ain't the most high. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Most High. It's right there. From the presence of the meaning, you that judgment day. <laughs> you better repent, man. I'm striving, Most High. I'm going to continue to strive. And I'm going to ask you to help me, too. Okay. All right. Let's move on, family. We're almost there. Okay. For thou art the almighty power, even the almighty power of them that repent. And in me, and in me, thou wilt show all thy goodness. And in me, in us, the children of Israel, thou wilt show all thy goodness. Okay? What we're supposed to be doing? Because he's, he's, he's saying you would, he was in him, the most I will show all his goodness. He said, in me thou will show all thy goodness. So the brother is actually knowing what he's, what I'm about to bring out to y'all. He know this because he know the law. That's why he repented. He know he's an Israelite. That's why he feels so bad. Because he know he done played the whore. He know he done went against the most high. He know he cheated on the hood. Okay. Let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 19 verse 6. This is what he knows. Once again, let me read y'all what the brother said. He said, and in me, thou wilt show all thy goodness. So he's want to be, he want to be clean and he want to go out just like Saul turned in or was converted to being Paul. He used to be this. Now he came back a man of the most high. He was slaying the saints. Then he became a saint himself. He went out and he taught the word. So now this brother stepping his games, his game up right here before the most high on his knees, making supplications, asking for forgiveness and wanting to repent and be converted. Like I just read in Acts. OK. He said. And in me, thou will show all thy goodness. Here's the goodness. Exodus chapter 19 and verse six. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Hmm. We can't get away from it, family. We're supposed to be a, a kingdom of priests. And he said, these are the words you're supposed to speak to the children of Israel, not to the Roman Catholic Church, not to the Pentecostal Church. I don't know how all them became priests. But the children of Israel, when I read to you earlier, they were suffering curses, serving their enemies for hunger, for food, for all these things. That's who the children of Israel were, not the Roman church. How did that come about? How did that come about? Mm, there's a deception going on here. Somebody's playing, playing somebody else. All right. And somebody's walking around wearing a name that they're not. Two people are. Y'all figure it out. Okay. For thou will save me. That's what he says. He said, first, he, let's go back to what he said. And in me, thou will show all thy goodness, right? For thou will save me. What is he talking about? Save me. Remember we read save me earlier? Let's see what, what he's talking about. Like once again, this brother know these scriptures. He says, thou will save me. Okay. Oh, yeah. He know the scriptures. <laughs> Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. What is this brother talking about? 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin. At the house of the almighty power. Mm -hmm. And we are the house. The children of Israel. We are the house. Let's see. And if it first began at us. Mm -hmm, what shall the end be. Of them. 
that obey not the gospel of the almighty power. So and that goes out even to the remnant. Those that even come back, like this brother coming back, even if he repent and putting that work in, he said, judgment shall start at the house of the almighty power. And how much more, how much the more of those that obey not the orders of the most high. So he's clearly judgment going to start at the house of those who even obey the most high. But it ain't looking good, period. So talking about being saved, shh, cut it out, man. All right, here we go. He says, for thou will save me. For thou will save me that am unworthy. He know it, unworthy, according to thy great mercy. His mercy endures forever. Psalms 136. Therefore, I will praise thee forever all the days of my life. So if you're going to praise him, you got to put some work in. You just can't be throwing your hands up saying, praise you, Lord. Praise you, God. Praise, praise. You got to do some work to praise something. You put your heart into it. Put your mind into it. You got the, that's, that's, that's an action. Praise is an action, not an emotion. Therefore, I will praise thee forever, all the days of my life, for all the powers of the heavens do praise thee. Wow. Once again, therefore, I will praise thee forever, all the days of my life, for all the powers of the heavens do praise thee. Stars, the moon, the sun, everything, all galaxies, the firmament, they follow orders. They praise the most high. They sing. When the sun shines, he's singing. When the moon shines, it's singing. When the rain cometh, it's singing. That's praise. They're giving honor, glory to the creator, man. <laughs> We're supposed to be doing the same thing too, y'all. That's the children of Israel. You heard what I just read? We're, in, we're supposed to be a kingdom of priests. Okay? Let's get it again. Therefore, I will praise thee forever, all the days of my life, for all the powers of the heavens do praise thee. And thine is the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Whew. Wow. So that's that, y'all. And that brother knew, that brother asked for, for forgiveness. He was willing to repent. He wanted to go forth and show the glory of the Most High, which was keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. He wanted to do what was written in Exodus 19 and 6, was to be a kingdom. I mean, uh, to be a, yes, to be a part of a kingdom of priests. He knew that. He knew he had betrayed, betrayed the Most High by going out sinning. He knew that. All right. So now I hope we know that we got work to do. Praise is work. We got to get busy, family. OK. And that's love. That's love, family. I got to keep working. I got to fight to the end. I got to continue to fight because they're going to keep coming at me. The world want me to the world want me back. They don't want me to test from them. They don't want to see me doing the right thing. The world is your family, your friends that you used to have. Might be your wife. Could be your wife, you know? It could be your twin brother, your auntie, your mama. All right? The people that you used to be at the family reunion with, your old class reunion people. All them people want you back, man. They don't want to see you do right. They're going to continuously keep. If you stop smoking, the first person going to come to you is going to be somebody used to smoke with you and want to give you something to smoke. That's just how that works. They're going to try you and try you and try you to the point comes where you're just going to have to separate yourself from them. Because if you don't, you're swimming in temptation. You're playing with fire. Bad suggestion. So I suggest we come back and do what that brother did. Vanessa, 
All right. With that, I want to give all honor, all glory, all praises to the Most High. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, by Shem Rakakadash, Wat the Water. Say Quam Yahshua Allah. Hope everybody have continue to have a blessed weekend. With that, say Shalom. Shalom.